Isn't it a little dangerous to base such an important conclusion on one technique? Well, happily, there are some others. For example, surrounding our Milky Way galaxy, there are what we call globular clusters, where we can get perhaps hundreds of thousands of stars all packed together in this ball. Mm -hmm. Gravitationally very stable, mm. and therefore very old objects. And by looking at those where the hottest, most luminous stars have burnt out, because in their age they simply ran out of their nuclear fuel. Uh. From that cutoff, it's possible to calculate an age for these objects. And we can find that it correlates very well, that these also come out in the vicinity of the 13 billion years. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an independent way of getting a great age for the universe. Th that's very important. How about the ratio of, uh, of different elements as that, those change? Can, can, is there any way to project back? Uh, not so easily. We can see, however, <clears throat> that the ratio of helium to hydrogen mm -hmm is very much determined by the mix of subatomic particles in the very earliest minutes of the mm -hmm. Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And that prediction is a very important one for telling us that the Big Bang picture is a correct one. It doesn't directly give us the age, but it does tell us that the whole scenario mm -hmm. links together not just by the rate of expansion and calculating it back, but how the elements themselves are generated. What about the age of the Earth? Is that consistent with the uh, estimated age of the universe? Well, of course, the Earth is a lot younger than the universe itself, sure. in part because it needed those heavier <laughs> elements that were being slowly made. Sure. But hey, look, I've brought along something that's quite relevant to this. Uh, the oldest macroscopic object on Earth. Now, the reason I say that is, you and I have more hydrogen atoms in us than any other atom, and many of those go right all the way back to the Big Bang, <laughs> but they don't count. Here's a big chunk. This is made of the stuff the Earth and the solar system wow. came out of. It's the Allende meteorite, uh, which fell in northern Mexico uh, quite a number of years ago. The Smithsonian Institution picked up, I guess, about a half a ton of material. Mm -hmm. uh, these little white things are the chondrules mm -hmm. that were the initial kind of sandy, granular material that was swept up into making larger pieces. And uh, they can be dated because of radioactive isotopes in them, and you get the ratio of those isotopes. And by knowing the half-life of, of, of that, you can project when it, when, the, when it started, when the process started. Yes, and it comes out to be 4.6 billion years ago. Wow. So that's about roughly a third of the age of the universe, mm -hmm. but it is the age of our sun and of the planets. Well, that would make it consistent that, as you know, it's the same order of magnitude in the same general category that the, it would take, even though the Earth, of course, is much younger, but it would take that time. So it, it really is consistent. It is. Isn't this neat? This is the uh, molten crust as it came down through our atmosphere, wow, wow. got hot enough <laughs> to, uh, uh, to melt that, and then it fragmented so that we could wow. see that surface wow. with the chondrules <laughs> in it. So in looking at the overview in terms of the importance of the question, did the universe have a beginning, how, how do you look at that? I think it's fascinating uh, that now astronomers have pretty much settled on a definite date, mm -hmm. uh, that something extraordinary happened at that time. Now, you ask, well, what was there before the Big Bang? <laughs> And of course, as far as our universe is concerned, there was no time because there was no motion by which time could be measured. Mm. So you can't ask that question, <laughs> really. If the universe is a more complicated place, a multiverse, 
you don't even know quite how to relate our time with other times that other universes might have. Who knows? <laughs> if there's another kind of a universe out there, it might have two dimensions of time. <laughs> it's weird. It's hard for us to imagine what it would be like. But uh, uh, in terms of our observable universe, we're in this extraordinary place that has an age, it has a history, it has been changing, and it has been changing in ways that make it possible to have an Earth and an evolutionary scheme that in the history of the Earth itself, we see the changes of the atmosphere that move to, let us say, an oxygen atmosphere so that higher organisms can be here. It's, it's a wonderful story. <laughs>